What's poppin' guys, your boy Baby Bojran, I'm back with another one for y'all, man. In today's video, man, I got a subscriber email, man, say he headed to Korea. So I'm gonna help this brother out as I usually do, man. Let's get to the video now. What's up, guys? This is your first time at my channel. My name is Big Bro Dre, man. I give advice, usually military advice, but I'm pretty much like the big brother you wish you had. If you've been watching my channel, you've been a member of the Secret Society, all we got is us. I appreciate your support, and I appreciate you always showing your boy love on this channel, man. Appreciate anytime you ever liked the comment, anytime you ever left the comment, anytime you ever watched the video, anytime y'all ever sat through them damn commercials, man. I appreciate y'all because y'all put money in my pocket, now, and I appreciate it, all right? Without further ado, let's get to the subscriber's email. And uh, the brother asked me to mention his name, so his name is Keith. Thank you, Keith, for the email, so I'm gonna go ahead and read it for you, man. Email reads, BBD, thanks for the videos. I'm a, a co commission officer, or old grade, like you say, <laughs> but I appreciate your content. Hey, man, I appreciate you watching, man. Just because you're an old grade don't mean you can't watch my content. So all my old grades out there, man, no disrespect. I, I appreciate y'all for watching, too. All right. Uh, you're nothing like the old grumpy warrants I met in college. <laughs> you know, most of those guys in college, and I hate to keep cutting the email off, but most of those people, the, the warrants in college is, like, retired or getting close to retired. So they be on some other shit, man. They, yeah, I, and they should be grumpy. The type of money they making, they should be happy as hell, to be honest. Uh, anyways, I just got to Korea on my first duty station orders. Say, Cap Casey. I just got, oh, you said I just got Korea, so he's not here yet. I just got Korea as my first duty station. Order, say, Cap Casey, man. Shit. All right. Uh, I man, I need tips. How it is, what it is to do there, etc. Help a brother out again. Thanks for everything you do on these videos. Secret society, all we got is us. Hey, I told you. Hey, I told you that shit was gonna catch on. I told you. I told. I just got this email from his brother yesterday, so I told y'all that secret society was gonna catch on. Man, we here. If you know, you know. Hey, so first off, Keith, man, I want to thank you for the email, man. I appreciate it. Um, I should be doing more of these Korea videos because there's a lot of people that are coming to Korea, and I get like questions like this in my Insta in my Instagram, but I don't never check it. So like, I might see these emails before it, IG. Like, I don't even know my password, and it be logging out on my phone. Man, you know how that social media. Y'all know I hate social media. The only social media I really acknowledge is YouTube. I mean, yeah, you could send me some on IG, and I probably will get back to you in a week or so. But it's not as fast as like Instagram or my email. My emails, I, I check them every day. So. All right, Keith, so the first thing you need to know, honestly, is which, so right now we in that still going through the pandemic and you know the Omicron, whatever just came out. So you need to know which uh, uh, vaccine you need to have, if you need to have one, and you need to know which um, the damn, which P, uh, test you need to have, whether it be the PCR or the rapid one, because they will not let you on that in this country if you got the wrong test. Um, uh, the unit I'm in, a couple people have been turned back at the Korea, at the Korea Customs because they didn't have the right, uh, the right doggone shot or the right test before they, I keep saying shot, I mean test, you know what I mean. They didn't have the right uh, test before they came here. So you want to make sure that's good. And a lot of people got in trouble for that shit too because you do a counseling before you're supposed to leave your unit to tell you which one you're supposed to get before you leave here. And, like, you get that brief, like, two or three times. So, you don't want to get the wrong shot, and then you end up here, or the wrong the wrong test, and then you end up here, and they don't let you in the country. They're either going to turn you back, or at that point, they're going to give you the the uh, the test and make you vaccine at customs. And it's not military. It's like Korean Korean policy. It ain't, it's not got nothing to do with the military. So, uh, that's the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you got the right uh, test before you board the flight and make sure it's within the right time before you board the flight. So that's the first thing you want to do before you do anything. All right, Keith, I need you to understand, man, when you fly to Korea, this is a long ass flight, bro. Like seriously, the flight, my, I think my flight was like 18 hours and some change. So depending on who you fly with, whether it be commercial or you fly with the AMC or whoever you fly with, it's going to be between about 18 and 24 hours. So you just want to prepare yourself for that. 
if you got little snacks or something, they let you bring it in a bag or if I would say bring extra cash, you know, US cash, and obviously until you get here. Make sure all your credit cards and all your debit cards are already like travel approved or whatever. You got to do like the little travel thing through your bank and then tell them that you're traveling. Because what will happen is you'll get over here and if, if like some cars don't have the chips, some do. But you get over here and your car don't work because you didn't tell the bank that you was traveling. It's for fraud protection. So that's the best way to look out for yourself is to make sure that you got your your cars and stuff on and make sure your government travel card, make sure that's good too. So if you need to use it to stay in a hotel or you need to use it, you know, at your destination. I don't know if y'all remember my other video. The first time you don't remember, but if you've been watching me for a while back in, a few videos back when I did a vlog on traveling here, I got stuck in Seattle for almost four days. So what I'm saying is you want to prepare yourself for whatever comes with the trip. So I mean, yeah, you an officer, so you got a little bit of change, bro. You should, you should, you should be doing all right with the money. Yeah, you fresh out of school, should have been saving. I know college tough, but you should have been saving a little bit to get over there. Not to mention the government travel card is just gonna keep you squared away till you get where you need to be. All right. All right. So when you in process here, man, this shit's pretty easy. I can't give you all the details of what happened, and I, I mean, we could talk on the phone. I'll give you my number and the email, and then you can call me or whatever. But I can't give you all the details online on what happens during the process. And I mean, they give you some classes and show you how to get acclimated to the polls and Korean culture, basic stuff like that. The big thing you're going to want to be looking to do, to be honest, because you're a senior and you count as a senior or whatever, is get you a car. And I'm going to tell you, like, uh, if anybody uh, song first class or above is eligible to get a car. So you got to get a license. You pretty much take a test and they give you like this little orange uh, Korean driver's license. And the reason I say you need a car is because depending on where you work, your job is going to require you to do so much moving around. You're going to have time to be catching taxis, waiting on buses, like because your duties and responsibilities are going to require you to be on all the time. So your time is going to be very limited. So getting a little cheap beater just to get around Korea, that's what most people do that are seniors here. You could probably get a car from between about $1,400 to probably the high on the highest nice car, you maybe 6000 if you just... You plan on staying maybe two or three years, then you might want to get something a little higher than that. I got I wouldn't plan on doing nothing but a year, man. So I, I only got the little fifteen hundred dollar beater, man. Y'all see my little Hyundai man chuggling along the road or whatever. But yeah, that's that's all you really need for when you first get here. Bear with them processing people, they do a real good job. You just got it's just a process that they got to go through to get you in here. So don't get frustrated by that shit, man. Just ride it out. Get through it, and then as soon as you know it, you'll be at your next, uh, you'll be at your unit. Now, while you're going through and processing, they're going to ask you if you want to live on post or off post. Here. It depends on how many people is on post. I can't give you the exact number because I'm pretty sure that's like some type of operation stuff. But um, it, off post has its benefits, on post has its benefits um, because living on post is more convenient because you ride up the road from work and there's gyms and stuff on here. Living off post is convenient because y'all know how it is. You don't want to see military people after you get off of work. That's just the way it is. So I, I get I get why both are beneficial. When you go through a process and just listen to the classes, make sure you get all the information you can in those first few days of upon arrival to Korea, all right? All right, bro. Let's talk about the good stuff. So the conversation here is pretty okay, man. Like, if you got a family, you, you ain't say your dependency status. If you got kids or wife or none of that shit, but I'm going to assume you single or whatever. So you probably won't be getting the 250 uh, separation pay. And that's the pay that they pay, the army pays you for like staying away from your family. And that, I mean, it, it helps. I'll be honest, like you, you got kids and stuff and you away from them for Christmas and you know, it, that money, that money's good. So, um, if you, it's another conversation you get, it's called COLA. I don't really know how that works, but I know the shit changes like every month. So like. It might be here one month. It might be there another month. Somebody comment in the comments how COLA works if you want me to do a video about it. But it's pretty much just another allowance that's given to you to offset the cost of actually living here in Korea. All right. Uh, you're going to get hazardous duty pay. You're going to get a grip because you ain't like one of the... I ain't going to say it's dangerous up there, but like your hazardous duty pay going to be higher than what, what I got out here, man. Humphreys. <laughs> Let's just put it like that. I think it's like $100 higher than what I make here, so... Hey, appreciate it. 
But I, I, I would tell you that you're going to be safe. Like, I, I did some time up at KC Band, and it was okay. You always want to be on high alert because of the nature of what we do. I mean, if you think about it, the military is, is about wars and fighting. So that is what the actual job of... I know we forget it because we live such a lavish life, but our actual job is to protect our country from, from dangers. Like, that's what our job is. So... You just be prepared for whatever, but I, you'll be you'll be fine up there, man. It's a bunch of stuff to do up there as well, too. Okay, so since you just come in, since you're O grade and it's your first duty station, right? You don't have shit to compare Korea to, so I I can't even explain the difference between the tempo here and different places to you because it's your first duty station. But what I can say is for other people is this tempo is like nothing you've ever seen other than like a deployment. So, like, the tempo here is everything is priority. Everything is last minute. People move out in and out every every year. So, it's pretty much you damn near every person is a rotational person because most people doing one year. The, at the most, you might do three or four, just depending on if you extend. But most people only doing the one year. They're doing their job and they're leaving. So, continuity is hard. It's, it's, it's tough to assess a, con a continuous stream of anything because of the way it works. And then everybody kind of know that about this place, but I feel like if you get yourself in a position where you can maintain continuity and you and you pride yourself on being a, con a continuous person and making sure the person that follows you is on par with what you're doing, you'll be fine. Because I uh, the person that did it before me was was good and squared away, so I ain't had to worry about that because she she held it down before I got here. What I will tell you though is the job tempo is it's up tempo, man. You're gonna be working, 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 like. You can get by with like, you know, 9 to 16, 9 to 4, 9 to 5, right? You can get by. But if you want to be the greatest, you're going to have to put in time. Just because there's so much to do and there's not enough time to do it. And everybody's not going to work as hard as you will. If you're in the secret society, man, you're going hard. So I already know, like, you're putting in work, right? Everybody not going to work like that because they don't give a shit. So that's what I'm saying, like, but the job is going to be difficult just because... You gonna have to put yourself in a position where you're where you're up tempo. Now, when you leave Korea, it's gonna feel like you're taking a knee because you ain't never gonna work this hard nowhere else. I'm just gonna put it out there like that. Not at this tempo. All right. So the job is something you're gonna have to get used to if you're not used to up tempo. All right. So travel around Korea just recently started open up. Um, you know the the Korean ministry, the government, or whatever. They had a bunch of COVID restrictions, which, to be honest, now have benefited the country exponentially because it has it has dulled the level of COVID increases and increases in COVID. Most of the COVID is coming from different countries. They're not internal to Korea. Most of that, that spread is coming when people come in here as opposed to the people that are already here. So right now, you could travel a bunch of places. Uh, USFK puts out a map to tell us where we could travel every every Wednesday, I think, or something like that. And I don't even think you need to ha be able to access a government computer to see it because I've been able to do it from my cell phone. So it's not, it's not unclassified. I mean, it's not classified, so you'll be able to see it. So just check out the website and you'll see where you're able to travel around Korea. Now, travel outside of Korea is a bit more difficult. And that's only because it's not the freaking Korean country that's keeping you here. It's the countries that you want to go to that's keeping you out. So you may not be able to, you may, you can leave Korea, but you may not be able to get into those countries, you know, with the exception of the United States. Of course, that's, that's where we're from. But other than that, a lot of countries haven't opened back up to citizens outside of the of their country all right so that's something you're gonna have to look into when you get here man i can't really give you the, a lot of information on that i haven't been able to travel to the places i went last time or travel to different countries like thailand and the Phil i can't you can't go to them places thailand is open up right now but they still have a few restrictions they gotta live and so i gotta look into it i can't give you all that information right now but as soon as i find something out i'll hit you back on your email and let you know or i'll make a video about it so just be on the lookout for that. Okay, so nightlife. Nightlife is cool here, man. Like you're gonna enjoy yourself, you know, being a young young lieutenant. You you gonna have a good time, man. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's it's different. You know, you're gonna you gotta find places to go where it's not gonna be a bunch of BS and soldiers outside fighting and shit. Like you just kind of gotta find places to fit in. Um, there are group. Uh, obviously, you know your officers. So you're gonna have. Your other officer people that you're going to hang with and get uh, accommodated with. 
Um, they got a lot of bars. They got a lot of nightclubs. They got a lot of you know, gang of coffee shops that are open all night. Um, there's no curfew anymore, but a lot of stuff closes at midnight. It used to be 10 o'clock, but a lot of stuff closes at midnight now. So you're going to have the opportunity to explore Korea the best uh, way you can. It's, it's not a bad place. When you going out, you ain't really got to worry about getting shot or somebody trying to rob you. This is like the safest, one of the safest places I've ever been in my life. So you, you'll you be fine here as far as nightlife goes. You just kind of got to find good pockets where you can enjoy yourself without getting mixed in with the, with the BS. And last but not least, be, listen, stay the fuck out of trouble. Stay out of trouble, man. And I hate to curse. I'm sorry. I ain't mean to curse, y'all. You too. Don't demonetize me, man. But... Look, stay out of trouble, man. Stay out of trouble, okay? It's easier said than done. And I'm, I say that because so many people come over here and get caught up in a lot of stuff. It happens. Like, you don't want to put yourself in a position where you, where you would, you know, dealing with, like, some soldiers and you get caught up uh, drinking and driving or, like, you know, fighting or, like, they got this thing out here called CCTV, right? Anything you do, they're going to catch you doing it. It's like a super expensive camera everywhere in Korea. They don't even really got police like that because all the all the damn lights have CCTV on them. So if you run a red light, you probably going to get caught. You going too fast, you probably going to get caught. They're going to send a ticket right to your, to your inbox. I got one the other day for like $2. I think I, I think I was going like two miles over the speed limit or something like that. So it happens. So what I'm saying is... Don't put yourself in a position where you're going to be in trouble. And you and KC, I'm in Humphreys, but I'm here. Like, hit me up. I, I'm not, like, I'm a regular person. I just happen to be on YouTube. So hit me up. You know, we'll link up or whatever, however that go, all right? So with that said, I'm going to close this video out by asking y'all to go ahead and press that uh, like button. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to my channel, man. We're going to be giving you good content. Um... Uh, for as long as I'm alive, I'm going to try to get y'all some content, all right? I don't think I'm going to be quitting YouTube no time soon. It's kind of fun. So I appreciate you guys' support, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. <music>